Shut up and sit down. There are leaders and there are those who lead. Isn't that a powerful thought? I could take you to a lot of places to share examples of incredible leadership in business. We could go from Apple to Nike, Under Armour to Microsoft, Amazon to Walmart. Well, it all seems a little out there in our mind's eye. Sure, we can identify with the brands because most of us use them. But it's hard to identify with the sheer scale and mass of those companies. Now, there is one brand that I would like to recognize for the gotta have it culture that they've created in this space known as the American Marketplace, and it's the company Yeti. This one's easier to identify with because the Yeti cooler was invented by two good old country Texas boys in their father's garage. I can almost see myself inventing something in my father's garage. You? What set Yeti apart from everyone else? Well, if you own a Yeti product, you already know. They have created a product that works. Let me share something with you. I'm a Yeti freak. Now, I'm not gonna go through everything with you, but this is some of my Yeti purchased down through the years. This is my dog's bowl. This is Flintstone. He's got his own little Yeti man mug, okay? I have Yetis in, in many colors. <laughs> Don't judge me. Uh, you can't even get this one in the green anymore. But I mean, these are these are bad to the bone. This one says Sale Symphony. It's got my name on the other side. This sketching, you can pay five dollars a side. I, I'm I'm hooked. I, I admit it. You probably used these where you you could take a pop bottle and put them down, you know, inside and and. Listen, the game just keeps going. I can go on and on. Did I show you this one? This has my name on it again, a nice little Bible verse on the back. Look, I've even got Yeti shirts. And these are cool, man. I mean, I've got Yeti shirts in all the different colors. When you think about how cool some of these are, this one's really soft and cottony. I kind of like it. And here's another Yeti in a, in a faded red. And here's another Yeti in dark blue. And listen, I could go on and on. Here's one of my shooting boxes with stickers. And as you can see, I've got, you know, Yeti on uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of my box here. And uh, I, I'm not even sure, you know, how to take this. I have an obsession with Yeti. And of course, I've got the the coolers, I got big coolers, I got medium sized coolers, I got crazy coolers, I've got soft coolers, I've got hard coolers. I should absolutely own half this company by now. Well, if you own a Yeti product, you already know. First of all, they created a product that works, keep stuff hot and cold. Yeti was born out of a belief that if they could create a product that worked better than everything else in the marketplace, then the country would come running after it. And man, were they ever right about that or what? Now, there are other higher end coolers out there, but you've probably never heard of most of them. They're awesome. But have you ever heard of Orca, Pelican, Kanai, or, or Ingle? Now, they're priced even higher than the Yetis. And yet, you're still going to pay around $400 for a family size cooler in the Yeti eventually the competition is going to create something that works equally good or better and probably cheaper but in the meantime yeti is king eating up the competition how do they do that well you ask any diehard yeti fan why they make such a fuss over this cooler and you'll likely be met with a lengthy lecture about what makes the brand so great from leak proof soft coolers that somehow keep ice cool for days to the massive Tundra 250 that makes a mean companion for sport fishing. I mean, this thing packs 155 cans with ice. The storied company has a cult following that has slipped its way into TV shows, music lyrics, pop culture. I mean, that Tundra cooler is large enough to pack 13 dozen cases of your favorite summer drink. You could put Jimmy Hoffa in that thing and never find him. Here's a brief overview of the Texas team's timeline. In 2006, Yeti is founded by Roy and Ryan Siders in their father's garage in Dripping Springs, West Austin, Texas. 
The company begins in 2008 selling the Tundra, the signature Yeti hard-shelled cooler through retailers like Cabela's Bass Pro Shops. February 2014, 20 and 30 ounce Rambler tumblers. Many of you have those on your desk. You've seen I have several. They're introduced July 2014. The Hopper soft cooler line is introduced. March 2015, the Colster can holder debuts. October 2015, the 10-ounce Rambler Lowball debuts. January 2016, 18, 36, and 64-ounce bottles join the Rambler series. I could go on and on. It has become a major status simple to own a Yeti. They're cool, but it's all based on something very, very important and more important than anything else we're going to talk about today. Their stuff works better than anybody else's stuff. It was the early 1900s. If I told you there was a group who was awarded $50,000 from the War Department, which would be like $5 million in today's currency to become the first ones to pilot an airplane, you would all know who I'm talking about, right? You say, sure, Orville and Wilbur Wright. Wrong. <laughs> the man, Samuel Pierpont Langley was a senior officer at the Smithsonian Institute and was also a mathematics professor at Harvard University. His best friends included the likes of people like Andrew Carnegie, Alexander Graham Bell. Well, Langley put together a dream team of talent to accomplish the goal of being the first to fly an airplane. The press followed them everywhere. They had assembled the finest mechanics, the brightest minds, and the best materials to accomplish their goal. The country followed the story closely in the newspapers and everyone knew their success was eventually guaranteed. Or was it? Not that far down the coast, about 200 miles as the crow flies, is Orville and Wilbur Wright. And they began working on their own flying machine. There's no funding, there's no high level connection, there's no government grants, no engineers. They've got a small group of people from Dayton, Ohio, who were as enthusiastic and inspired about the idea as the Wrights. And that's all the help they really got. Not a person on that team, including Orville and Wilbur, even had a college education, more or less rubbed shoulders with Alexander Graham Bell. Yet they became the real dream team and on December the 17th, 1903, they made history and became the first people to fly an airplane. How did this happen? How did the Wright brothers succeed where better equipped, better funded, and better educated teams could not? It wasn't luck. Both the Wright brothers and the Langley team were highly motivated. Both had a strong work ethic. Both had practical minds. Both were pursuing the same goal, but only the Wright brothers were able to inspire those around them and truly lead their team to develop a technology that would change the world. The Wright brothers started with a massive mind shift. Yeti is so awesome because Roy and Ryan Siders created a following of people who, who acted not because they were swayed, but because they were inspired. Inspiration makes everything more personal. People are less likely to be swayed by low premiums, persuasion, incentives. They're swayed by the connection that makes the common goal real. For instance, I can own a piece of Yeti. Now, it might cost me a small fortune, but it's mine. I'm part of the club. Look at all the stuff I've got. What does your brand inspire? By the way, by brand, what I mean to ask is, what do you inspire? What if we could all learn to think, act, and communicate like those who inspire? Studies show that 80% of Americans do not have their dream job. If more knew how to build organizations that inspire, we would live in a world where that statistic could be reversed. People who would love going to work, listen, they're more productive, they're more creative, they go home happier and healthier. They go home and don't want to kick the cat every night. They're inspired employees. And they make strong companies even stronger and make for stronger economies 
Nobody gets leadership like Apple. Now, I'm going somewhere with this, but you've got to hang on till the end of this message to find out where I'm going. It started out with albums. Sony changed everything when they came out with the Walkman. You remember the Walkman? I mean, you could take your cassette tapes anywhere you wanted. Didn't last long because eventually they came out with the Discman. Now you can take your CDs anywhere you want. And that format changed it all. And then the development of the first MP3. It allowed you to take your digital music anywhere. Apple didn't get there first. In fact, it's 22 months later when the first iPod comes along. Apple didn't invent the MP3 or the platform or the technology that became the first iPod, but they're credited with transforming the music industry. Why? Because they told us why we needed them to provide it to us. Same thing is true with phones. Apple didn't start the cell phone craze, but they've taken it over. They started with their why and made it your why. Now, more than 50% of all smartphone users in the United States are Apple iPhone users. Same thing with computers. Apple Mac, they didn't invent the first computer system to carry around with you, but they probably have built the best one. Ever walk into an Apple store, within seconds I'm greeted with, Hi Mark, what can we do to help you today? First time that ever happened to me, I just assumed the guy was psychic. You know, how did he know my name? Now. It's just the privacy settings on my phone allowed him to identify me as I walked into their store in Las Vegas. I quickly changed those settings to private. <laughs> Apple gets the why. And they make you want to buy Apple stuff. Orville and Wilbur Wright had a why and it made people root for them, want to volunteer to help them. Their leadership spread from a personal why to a corporate why. The Yeti guys, they get it too. They created a cult following with a cooler, a mug, a thermos bottle. One day, it may be called a Yeti bottle. Here's the point. It all starts with why. If it doesn't, team, if it doesn't, it usually doesn't start at all. Leaders, please listen, find your why, and people will follow you. You may have great stuff to sell. You've created great stuff, but it's not selling. Why? Maybe stop dead in your tracks today, and let's get back to our why. Become a radical leader. May I tell you one final story about radical leadership? You know, it wasn't that many years ago that people believed that the world was flat. You know what happened during that period of time? I mean, the period of time where people genuinely believed that the world was flat, what happened? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. No exploration. Because people feared that if they traveled too far in one direction, they might literally fall off the earth. Once a radical truth was taught that the world was actually round, the why kicked in and people began exploring and behaviors changed on a massive worldwide scale. You see, the correction of, of simple false assumption moved the human race in a new direction. Now, consider how your sales organization is formed and how decisions are made. Why do some organizations succeed and others do not. It all comes down to inspirational leadership. Yeah, great product, but leadership is critical. Let me prove that to you and I close. I found a better cooler out there than Yeti. Google it. Probably half a dozen people out there who've tried this new cooler and they actually prefer it to the Yeti. Yet Yeti still has this cult following. They've created this status symbol or club-like feeling. Again, how did they do that? Well, I found an online article about the Yeti guys, Roy and Ryan, and when asked how they did it, they had one answer. And it's the same answer that Apple, Amazon, and Orville and Wilbur Wright would give. They said, before we ever made our first cooler, we looked at each other and asked, why are we doing this? Please get this. At a kitchen table not far from Austin, Texas, they found their why. They said it has influenced every decision about Yeti from that moment to this. We always teach producers to find the customer's why button and you'll make more sales. It's true, but I'm sick of teaching that. Even though it's true, it's so true because here is a new message and it's one of great inspiration for every sales leader, business leader, and life leader under the sound of my voice. It'll be easier for you to discover their why when you first discovered your own. Sadly, most people who lead are not leaders, but every 
person can become a leader. Once you find your why, you, the stuff you're selling, the things you're making, the people you're contacting will sense it and they'll fall in love with you. You are incredible. You deserve the success that is coming your way. Thank you for your great attention team. I'll see you in our next episode.